how do it look? Um, how do I look? <laughs> I, don't I don't know. Like, yeah. See, that's the thing is you, you might need a monitor. I don't know how you connect the monitor. F- so we see that in the back, right? Well, look, yeah. Casey is a. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, you, great. You, oh, look, you, you, the you, camera you. is shaking because of Casey. Yeah, yeah, what the hell, man? Yeah. <laughs> what the hell? You can just <laughs> walk right through it. It's all right. We'll just cut you out later. <laughs> like, why are you going to do that? Now you shook the, 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 the copy machine. <laughs> it's, all, it's all good. All right. Uh, let's just jump right in. Yeah. All right. Is the camera at least fine? Huh? I think the camera is fine. Because he, he, he knocked it, it moved. It's good? Yeah, it's good. Okay. Yo, what's up guys? Welcome to Real Talk NYC. And today I got my co-host, uh, Kenwood Chang. Yep. Right How here. are you guys doing? So we are not scripted. We are doing this raw and we're doing this uh, kind of like live uh, and give you guys the reaction. But on this uh, channel, now that this is kind of like our first kind of channel in a yeah, way, right? This is our first one right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> doing, no filter, no filter, just no straight, nothing, just straight yeah. up. So we're going to try to bring you guys a lot of information related to the real world, uh, related to real estate in New York City. In New York City. Yes. And uh, what it can be, you know, like affect the, the market and uh, what can you do improve. So the channels uh, more likely is going to coming out from our experience. Yep. And um, to give you guys uh, more information and intuitive uh, info uh, in this real world, what's going to happen. So today topics, uh, we're going to run down. Uh, Kenwood has a couple of topics. I'm going to have a couple of topics. So each episode, I think we're going to try to bring like maybe uh, two or three topics yeah. right? mm-hmm. to make this more interesting. So today topics uh, we want to talk about and cover is uh, mental healthness for a real estate agent. That's the first thing. Yeah. And um, uh, some informational uh, news that is uh, coming on, very exciting news coming on for the, the New York market in Brooklyn, right? Mm. That we're going to cover. And then uh, one of it, I, th- I guess we're going to end it with, uh, with a new exciting uh, new development too in oh. Brooklyn that's happening. Wow. So, okay. so yeah, so th- let's, let's jump right into the main topic, Kenwood. Yeah. Well, let's cheers first. All right. What are you having today? Coffee. What kind of coffee? Special coffee? Starbucks? Just, just oh, Starbucks. It's black coffee. <laughs> right here. Starbucks? Dream oh, in man. color. He, he has a very exciting one. Mine is a, this is my specialty coffee that I, I do. And uh, if you guys want the recipe, let me tell you, it's just a triple shot espresso in a venti cup with the vanilla foam and two pump of classic syrup. Excellent. And mine is just black coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I like it a little bit strong. So, all right. All right. So the first topic we're going to talk about today, right, Brian, is um, mental so healthness, healthness right? or the mindset going to real estate. I was, uh, yeah. I mean, uh, no, uh, mental healthness, not even just starting, right? I mean, as of right now. Yeah. Even for this coming up from our experience, right, for you two, mm-hmm. let's ask about that. Sometimes uh, for me. Uh, mental healthness in real estate. Sometimes I get really burnt out. Yeah. People don't people don't understand how hard and how difficult real estate can be. It is a tremendous uh, pressure, mm. I would say, in real estate. For for from my end, coming from my end, I've been in the field for over uh, twelve years and beyond. Uh, after ten years, sometimes I stop counting. After that, <laughs> right. but but I've been in the industry for over twelve years now, and there's always up and down, up and down in real estate uh, mm-hmm. because we always try to catch that deal after one and another, right? Yeah, constantly, constantly on the move and constantly hustling every single day. See, uh, a lot of people when they get into the real estate field, they don't know that it's not just a nine to five job. It's more than that. It's more than that. You sleep, you eat, everything you do is thinking about the next deal or the current deal, right? Right. Yeah. And even when you get off work, you still have clients calling you, right? <laughs> yeah. And yeah. what are you going to do? Not pick up? <laughs> <laughs> well, you could not pick up, but then that's the thing that, that, that like I said, the mental healthness for real estate is that, that, that lingering in the back all the time. Yeah. 
right? Oh, I have to pick, uh, you're, you have that anxiety of like, you know, oh, I gotta pick up the phone call all the time. Yep. Right? You can't stop working. But that, that affects me. But what I learned now in this field, you have to have like a time block. Mm-hmm. You gotta learn how to do like time blocking for yourself yeah. and for your family. Because that, that is what you're kind of like, that's what my motive, I don't know about you, but that is kind of like my motive to, to work, is to actually have more free time and more time for my family, mm-hmm. right? That, that's motivated me to be better. But sometimes, uh, you know, that, you know, like I said, the deal can affect you because uh, in the real estate field, yeah, you're not gonna make money right off the bat. The deal is gonna close in maybe, luckily, you know, three or six months down yeah. the road. Yeah. Right. And that the pressure that I'm talking about for mental health for real estate agents is that 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 anxiety, like all the time when you're not making deals, you're 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 you feel like you're you're failing your family. Hmm. You're failing. Uh, you know, you're making up like if you have mortgages, you have rent, you have other stuff that you have to pay expenses. It's a lot. Yeah. And it depends on the lifestyle that you are living to as well, because hmm. real estate agent. Yes. Some of them like top producer. You can make tons of tons of money. But then when you stop working, you're back to kind of like zero again. Right. Right. There's, there's one very interesting topic that you brought up, Ryan, uh, yeah. about time blocking your schedule, right? Mm-hmm. I guess for a lot of brand new agents, when they first come in, they don't know what to expect. And they're just running around and running everywhere. And it feels like they have an erratic schedule. Mm-hmm. But how has time blocking your schedule make you feel like you have a lot more time? On your hands. Well, time blocking doesn't make me feel like a, a lot more time, right? You know, in a day, you only have a certain amount of time mm-hmm. that is night already, mm. right? The most you have is like 16 hours, right? Right? So you have to utilize that 16 hours very intuitive. That's why I'm saying time blocking yourself and making a set schedule for you to know what you need to do every single day in, day out. Mm. You see, if you don't put it in your schedule, more likely it's not gonna happen, right? right? So time blocking create that, you know, for me, like, you know, okay, like a certain matter of time, like for instance, six to eight o'clock, I'm done. I'm, I'm you know, that's like family time for me, right? That, that, that's the time when I say, okay, I gotta, you know, put everything on the back end, leave a message, text me or something like that, you know? And then in my daytime, like for instance, like, you know, eight, 12 or, eight to, to nine, I have a set time where, you know, you make the phone call, you make the things, you make a showing in your day, you know, meetings and things like that. So that, that is kind of like what, what the time block can do for you, mm. right? It, it gives you more of a intuitive uh, schedule for you to work. Because uh, for a real estate agent, I think a lot of them that I talk to, they still learning on that, right? right. You know, they, they, they still don't know exactly how to time block and especially the newer agent, they, they have no idea because they are so used to customize like from nine to five or, or something like that from their over years job. They yeah. don't take this business as a, as a business. Yeah. Right. They, they take this business like kind of like, you know, somebody have to tell them what to do mm-hmm. all the time and they don't know how to. That's why the failure rate in real estate is so high. Yeah. Right. 90% in their first year, everybody drop out of real estate. <laughs> It's like college, oh, nah. <laughs> but, but that is the thing, you know, so the mental health on this part, the pressure, man, is, is, is for me is so much because like I said, now I have mortgage and I have a family of three that I have to provide every single month. So I need to make a certain amount of income every single month to fit my lifestyle that I want right now. Mm. But one thing, uh, this is a guilty plug. <laughs> and that's why I, I switched it from my my old company to EXP, mm. you know, it, it's just a system wise where EXP can provide me with a lot more technologies, a lot more too that I can use and then free up my time a lot more to spend time with my family. So that's, that's a guilty plug in there. Yeah. Well, let's, let's, talk, let's talk about that a little, right? So what, what is the difference between the EXP and your, your old traditional brokers that you, you came out from before? Yeah, I mean, uh, well, my old brokerage before was I'm just an agent, right? Mm. Like any other agent out there, brick and mortar in a way, I just have the split with the broker, you know, whatever the set split that I have, you know, I reach up to like a top producing rank. Mm. So my split is 
when you reach up to top producer, you're you have a lever, a, a lot more leverage to to deal with that broker. Right. Right. So I was getting split like almost um, ninety five five. Put it out. No, ninety ten. I believe somewhere around there or ninety five five. Uh, that that was my split when I was at my old firm. But that's a pretty good split. So why why did you leave? Why did you leave the open to, to join EXP? <laughs> yeah. Well, I left because the technology wise, like I said, right. technologies uh, at my own firm uh, is just like I said, is a localized and mom and pop kind of deal. Everything that I do, I have to do it for myself. Hmm. There's no really like a real support on this way with technologies or any other stuff that I have to do. Everything I do is like, I'm a business owner. I understand that. But you know, sometimes you need that support too. Yeah. They don't have that. Everything I have to do is kind of like outsource it out there for website, for, uh, you know, uh, assistant or uh, doing certain stuff that I need for my advertising, marketing. I don't have that. Mm -hmm. And training too as well. Uh, there's, there's only so much a broker can do. I appreciate my old broker. I mean, he spent time and, and effort to nurture me to where I'm at right. to get to where it is. I appreciate that. But... For him, he has a limitation, yeah, right, too, as well. Uh, so that's why I left my old firm to find, because at the, I left when a pandemic happened. Nobody was working in the office, and, and I was thinking more of, like, how can I provide a steady stream of income to support my family? Mm. Because at that time, nobody was making money. Nobody's making deals. I do have other things in the pipeline at that time too. Yeah, I mean, but the city was locked down. Everybody, everybody was locked down. Since everybody, March, yeah, so it got down. me more. It got me thinking a lot yeah. more. Yeah, and then I was looking into is that you know the first options that I was thinking like you know open my own firm, mm. or you know join somewhere that is a lot better than what I have right now. Right. So I was first. I was thinking about opening my own firm because I want more. Yeah. Right. And I feel like, you know, at that time and age, even at right now, I have a lot more energy. I'm not going to wait until like I'm 50 to do something, right? I was at top producing at my old firm for a straight three years. Mm. I was making over six figure easily. <laughs> yeah. Put it that way. And I was satisfied. I was comfortable. Put it that way. But then I, I want to challenge myself. I want to challenge my, I want to discover something new that I, I, I want to challenge myself to be better, be more. So that's why I was looking into it first is like I said, open my own firm and tackle on like, you know, getting agents and making my own kind of deals and having the hundred percent commission and doing all that with technology wise and stuff. But then when I look into it, the overhead of opening your own firm is tremendous. Mm. You know, even so, like for instance, I opened a franchise firm talking about Remax or Exit or any other franchise firm yeah you got to pay your franchising fee and of course you're still going to cut uh, your 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 franchising for them every single year mm. right the cost for the for having their their logo on there so i was like man that's a lot of money yeah. to start too it really is and and not only that i still had to have the responsibility to take care of all the agent too this is liability as well yes the liability was heavily mm. on that. And I was thinking to myself, man, I, I don't want that heavy liability. You know, like for instant trainings and, and all these other stuff. And then all of a sudden I see, you know, EXP. I was searching and then EXP popped up and I was looking into it. And I, I was like, oh, wow, this system looks great because their technology is a cloud-based company. And I've seen that, you know, for instance, it's not like a brick and mortar kind of thing anymore. Mm. So that's why I was looking at, you know, like, like it's the same way if you compare, you know, like Blockbuster and Netflix. Yeah. So I was like, oh, wow, the technology is on EXP now. It looks like it's the future. Right. So when and, you're and I was thinking, how can I beat that? That's the one thing that I was looking at. How can I beat EXP? Mm. <sighs> so what, what's, it sounds like what you're saying, yeah. right, Brian? Let's unwind it, unpack it a little first, right? Mm -hmm. So it sounds like EXP join the exp and now just start your own brokerage it cuts down the cost expenses yeah of running a, like a, a traditional broker mm -hmm. uh, brokerage but um let's talk about how what got you thinking you, you said it all started from the idea of when COVID happened mm -hmm. the city was shut down uh, at that time nobody knew what was going to happen because that was a, a frightening time especially the city lockdown you yeah. don't know and nobody want to go out everybody wear a mask 
even when they reopened the city back in June, I believe it was June. Yeah, yeah. So it was somewhere in the yeah. middle when they started phase two. Mm-hmm. Uh, people start going back to work, but a lot mm-hmm. of people didn't know what to expect, right? I mean, looking back at it now, you're probably like, oh, yeah, well, we we've been through that, you know. But <laughs> at that time, it, it was kind of a, a scary it thing. Is scary, yeah. Yeah. So I guess you, you wanted some security, and then. Mm-hmm. You know, you being you being a top producer at yeah. your overall good. You, I was thinking, how long ten. can yeah. I last in that old system? Mm. You see, like how how much do I have to make every single year, day in day out, like constantly, right, to maintain my my lifestyle that I want? And you know, am I going to continue this until I retire? You know, mm. that 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 was that's what I was thinking. Like, even when I retire, how can I still make that money? Or something yeah. like that. So at EXP, they have this revenue share that that they give me stock share mm. as well. So my old firm, you know, even when I've been in there for that long a period of time, I don't even own the company. I don't even have part of the company, right? I don't have anything that is going to tie me into the company. I was just an agent that's doing the split. That's it. Mm. So there's no s- other... So Option. so you're saying with EXP, you're like an agent and you own the company. You yes. have part ownership as well. That's correct. See, that, that's the, the beauty of EXP. That's why the system that they have is like, yeah, it, it's so good. Is that, what is that sound? I don't know. I think that's someone's food. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> so, I mean, I guess everything ties back to the mental toughness and... Well, like, like I was saying, there, there's a lot more in the system of EXP that I was thinking like, hey, I, how can I compete this with EXP? I wasn't right. thinking like, oh, I'm gonna join EXP. I was thinking like, how can I beat this? Because they provide like technology wise, like KV Core. Yeah. That thing, they create your own website for a very inexpensive cost because you know, as you know, as an agent, to start your own website, I, I look into it too. Hmm. Even when I was at my old firm, because I want to build my website, make it look nice. So you had the idea of building had, your, expanding a team and as well. That's right. Yeah, okay. expand my team. And, and I was getting team, mm-hmm. you know, in a way. Because I was top producer at my own firm. A lot of people kind of like want to flop it onto my side in a way. Yeah, but, but that's one thing I want to talk about. So what, what is the difference yeah. between you, you building your own team at a, a brokerage and why you're building a team at EXP? What is the difference? So old brokerage, if you were at my old brokerage, if I build a team uh, and I introduce them to the, old, the, the company itself, yeah. I can't really build, build a team, mm. put it that way. I can build a team, but the, the thing is the split is still going to my old brokers, right? Yeah. It, it's not going to me. I don't mm. get anything. You know, mm. when I invite uh, or another agent that saw me doing top producing, they got interested in the firm. Right. right. So let, let's stop right there for a second. So, yeah. okay. So right now with EXP, you're building a team. Mm-hmm. So when the agents that you come into your team, when they produce, but doesn't that go to EXP as well? Or yes. is that a little different? Yeah. It does go to EXP, mm. but EXP has, like I said, revenue share thing that they will split it. They will reward the agent that introduced them. It's called sponsorship. Um, you know, okay. so they introduce them to they rewards the agent that introduced them with that 80 20 split right mm-hmm. so they the, the 20 split that's going out to the company they're going to take that not from the agent but from that 20 to rewards the person that that introduced you know that person to the company okay so you're getting like kind of like a cut so there's if we jump into exp there's seven tiers level mm. so the first tier is like you know you you can make like each agent, the maximum that you can do in your front line, that first tier is, is only $2,800 a year. Right. It's not mean that you, you make it every single month, but a year for that agent. Why do they do that? Because the system is very fair. Mm. So they, they, it's just not like, you know, like, like, you know, you're making that first tier is like almost, I, I would say exit in a way, you know, exit has that kind of model system back in the days, but it's just a one, one level tiers kind of reward. But this one has multiple tiers, so it's seven tiers. So you, you, if you want to unlock the second tiers, you have like over five agent under you, mm. and then uh, the more so, you have, the more upline you have, you unlock more tiers, and then that tiers tie into your agent as well. So if we're gonna look into, I would say if you want to look in depth in that, I think that that is like another episode of itself. But just give you the slight image of what it is. It's seven tier system that I can make. So it's pretty much, it sounds like it's a model 
that mm-hmm. has a lot of potential. Yeah. Where you could definitely uh, gives you a lot of room to grow, mm-hmm. and you can upscale it. Yes, pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah. Okay. So let's say if you were to recruit five members when you were doing a traditional brokerage, right? If you were to recruit five members, mm-hmm. you wouldn't get anything that whatever they produce, right. they just go to the brokerage. Yeah. But you're talking about if you were EXP and you have five team members and you directly sponsor them and they produce, mm-hmm. they you will get to, the EXP will Rewards reward you with something. The maximum, like I said, the first year. Mm. But then the second tier is when you help them out, you help your agent out more and more. That's the beauty of it, the EXP is that they encourage people to help out more and more. That's yeah, what that's I, I want to talk about. You mentioned help. So yeah. there's, there's definitely a mutual exchange when, when you help them. Of course, when you help them grow, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. they reward you better. Yeah. Wow. Because you help them build out more and more equity to the firm, mm-hmm. right? So that the firm will appreciate that. And the EXP is like, EXP is the whole corporation. It's not just like, like a franchise, different, different brick and mortar out yeah. there. So that's the beauty of it, that they can use that because it's not brick and mortar. They don't have a lot of overhead that they have to expand. Right. So that's why they can give back to the Asian a lot more. Mm. You see? So that, that's why the system is so intuitive. That's why a lot of people now coming over to EXP is almost like 86,000 agent right now. Wow, 86? 86,000 mm. agent, yeah, that EXP. But uh, that, that just why I, I made the switch, but... Uh, Coming back to how long did it take from them to reach to eighty six thousand exp? To be honest, when I was at exp when I came over, they were only when you, around. You joined, Brian. I I joined in two thousand, uh, I think uh, twenty twenty or twenty twenty one, early around there. I think twenty twenty. The end of twenty twenty. Yeah, when the pandemic uh, yeah happened. After. Uh, okay. uh, yeah, that's when I joined, and at that time they were only around like fifty five or fifty thousand agent. And look at that in a total of like three years or so. Mm. I think back up. in, yeah, when you joined, I think it was only like 30,000 agents. So. 30? Yeah. No, I think it was like 50. I'm not sure. But, you know, uh, well, uh, we can show you that later on. You can look it up. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. Like, just look at it to see how many Yeah, the time design. frame yeah, on yeah. that. You can search that up. But, but uh, yeah, I think it, it's around there. But it, that's why I'm saying the company has grown exponentially. Yeah, but super it, also, fast. it also speaks a lot of volume as well. Because if you, if you join at the end of 2020, let's say the 2021, mm-hmm. beginning of 2021, mm-hmm. you had 30,000 agents. Now it's your 86, 88,000 agents yeah. Yeah. within two years. Yeah. Two years. Crazy. Wow. The company is, a, you know, a lot of people is now realizing that because, like I said, the brick and mortar, the overhead that you have and the responsibility that you have is a lot. You got to yeah. pay rent. And then not only rent, but you have to re- be responsible as a broker. You're responsible for that agent. But EXP, they take that low off because it's a one corporation. So they have everybody to be able to help with your agent and make them better. Yeah. But I think what a lot of people are seeing where you have that, a lot of people joining within the last two years is mm-hmm. because I think everybody's seeing what you're seeing, Brian, mm-hmm. in a way where, hey, I'm not just an agent. I'm an agent owner. Yes, of, agent of, owner. Agent owner of the company. Yeah, that's Whereas correct. they, with, with the revenue share system, they see a lot of growth, mm-hmm. a lot of Because uh, there's stock upscale. share too. Yeah. So every deal you make, you get a certain percent of stock. Yeah. And every deal that you can do, you can put aside 5% and get a 10% discount on the stock. So man, you're making, making money on top of that already. Mm. Not even talking about recruiting agent. You know, getting the stock only, making deals, you're, you're buying to the, it's like you're buying into the company. Mm. You know, you're buying the stock to the company. Imagine, you know, like 10 years from now, how much, if I was still continue top producing for 10 years, how many stock I would get already? Mm. I know one guy, uh, the guy that I, I seen, uh, I forgot his name, but uh, he, he was at EXP back in the days where pretty new and he accumulated, he just was a top, he wasn't even recruiting. He was doing like production. So he was top producer in EXP. And the guy accumulated over now, he's, he was looking back, he didn't even pay attention because when you take it out like 5% from your commission, it's not even that much Yeah, buying the stock, mm. you know, and you get a 10% discount. Mm. And then by the time he uh, like accumulated for five years, the guy looked back, he made almost like a million bucks mm. on just stocks. Yeah. What company can give you that? Tell yeah. me. Yeah. For that certain amount of period of time. Yeah. Five years. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like that's that's the, the beauty of it. I mean, I can still like just produce and produce until my retirement or whatever it is. And I still have that blank of security of like, hey, I still own EXP on the stock side. 
That's true. Right? You have some ownership. And then, yeah. yeah. And then later on, if I do need the fund or whatever it is, hey, look back, man, I, I accumulate like, like a couple hundred thousand dollars or so. Mm. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's one way. But uh, so back to like, like, mental healthness how about you and what you know, what's what's your struggle in 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 real estate as well there's, there's a it's uh, a lot it's a lot yeah. so as everybody knows who's been in real estate it's it's you you have to have a really strong mindset you have to be mentally tough mm -hmm. and and, that, and i think that relates to a lot of people in, in life anyways people who have jobs you know mm -hmm. uh family kids whatever it really still a lot of things in, in life yeah not everything in life will go perfectly it's not like it's picturesque perfect picture that you're gonna think hey i'm thinking this is gonna be a, the nicest picture i've ever seen but it doesn't happen mm -hmm. some way or some other way there's always gonna be something that thrown at you and it's gonna mess you up yeah and that's why I, it's, it's tough being in real estate because it's like when, when you first join you just don't know what to expect you're mm -hmm. thinking, hey, I have a very flexible schedule. <laughs> I can do whatever I want, yeah. right? But if, if, that, if you're thinking that, then you know what that means? You're not making money. <laughs> yeah. Because you have such a flexible schedule, schedule right? Yeah. Yeah. Flexible can be, you know, is an, they call it knife in both ways. <laughs> right? A double-edged sword. Yeah, double-edged sword. You know, like double-edged knife. You know, like it, 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 it is like that, right? Yeah. When you have such a like like you think that you have a lot of free time mm. and then your mom gonna jump in and tell oh yo i see you have free time you know <laughs> do something for me right and then whoever it is or something like that they, they could jump in but you know honestly like you said you know a, a top producer or guy that's really busy you don't have time you don't have time yeah you totally don't have time yeah. and the whole day you, you constantly think about other ways to do certain things like when i was you know like even right now like uh, i got burnt out a little bit like content creating mm. right all yeah. these other stuff, you know, like that I had to do, like to get like, you know, my business going and, and, and produce out, you know, think about content, how to create content. Those are like another different massive stuff that you have to do. Right. Thinking content, people think it's easy, like picking up the phone and, and just shoot certain stuff. But the idea that's constantly thinking about your head before you even start doing it. That's already kind of like pulling your hair out, right? <laughs> you know? No, I, I agree. And then, yeah. And then, and then. And then doing it is another thing, right? Doing it is like you gotta take up your phone and you take up your time and producing it and then and try to edit it and, and coordinate it and all that other stuff. People, <laughs> it's not easy, guys. You not know, as easy as, not as, not easy as easy, it looks. Yeah, <laughs> as people think. You know, the 15 second, the lesser the, the, the second it is, the harder it is, mm. you know? Because you have to send your message across that 15 second. Right, so there's a lot of things you have to cut yeah. out, edit, and make sure you That's only correct. have like a, a 15, 20 second mm -hmm. time frame for that mm -hmm. video. Wow. Well, think about it. if you crunch an hour content yeah. into 15 seconds, how are you going to do that? Yeah, that's tough. <laughs> right? That is tough. Yeah. Uh, think about it. People spend hours of recording yeah. and then they, they crunch it in. Yeah. You know, like, Ken, so, so what, is, what is your struggle in real estate <sighs> that breaks I, I, you down? As from when I first started, or from yeah. oh okay, well I mean, like when, when first uh, started, any yeah, any kind of experience, yeah, yeah, like the trouble before. So when you first start real estate, you just don't know what to expect, right? And you know, like every agent goes through that struggles. Everyone does. Mm -hmm. No one comes in like, hey, I'm prepared. I'm I'm doing this because you don't know what you get in yourself into. Yeah. So everyone struggles. My I remember my first struggling is I probably. Double booked an appointment. <laughs> <laughs> it's because you're just trying to line everything up, uh -huh. and that's it, it. Goes back to the point where you were talking about height. Time blocking is mm -hmm. very important. Did you reach up to the time where you think about you want to quit real estate? No, I did not. But my wife always said, "If this is not right for you, I think you should, yeah, just do something else." <laughs> well, th there was a period of time when I think about I, I was going to quit real estate. Mm. Honestly. Because it was just so much pressure, you know. And what brought so you to So much that? pressure, like for instance, like like constantly looking for deals for this way, like making phone calls, talking to strangers. Sometimes I, I feel like I don't even want to do it, right? I don't yeah. want to even pick up the phone call and talk to people because, like, you get yelled at. Yeah, you get yelled at all the time. That's you true, know, like yeah. you get uh, objection all the time. If you guys ever make phone call before, you guys will understand what I'm talking about. 
Yeah, they'll right? chew you out. They, they, because yeah, especially in New York City. I don't know about other states and things like that, but we we work in New York City. People are so they have a guard up. Everybody have a guard up, mm. and then you have to learn how to break that guard down for them mm. because they have constantly bombarded with like you know people calling them, for instance, right? Right. Asking for business, asking for that. So now, how are you gonna? retweet that and actually has a conversation a civil conversation with this person that's what we do day in day out that's what i do day in day out you know you get rejected all the time mm. so you need to build that 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 guard for yourself too as well you know taking the rejection like you know hey because the other guy they don't actually know who you are as a human being either yeah right so the, it is it, is rightful for them in a way like you know telling you get the hell out of here you know, like, why you keep calling me for what? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So sometimes, you know, I got over burned out from that. Yeah. Right. And then I kind of like, you know, linger off in a period of time where I don't want to make that phone call anymore. Because who in their life want to get rejected all the time? Yeah. You think about it. Right. But that's the key to becoming success. If you could surpass that part and think differently. On, on my end that's why the reminder of myself like you know what is my goal what is my thing if i can catch that that lead for instance i can make ten thousand dollars that that keep me from pushing and then that keep me from driving and, and then my family as a reminder like hey if i stop i i won't make this kind of certain income that i have to provide for my family so that give me the motivation that's why in exp every single day or not EXP, but in real estate, uh, every single day you have to remind yourself what is your purpose, right? Mm. What is your goal, and what 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 what's going to make you drive to be more? So that's that got me in a way, you know, like out of that 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 situation, because I honestly I'm a, I was at the verge of actually quitting real estate because yeah. I was tired of like you know chasing people, right? Because real estate don't happen overnight. Even you get that client and you stop chasing that client, that client goes somewhere else. I mean, the customer, not even a client, but a customer. Yeah. Even your client, actually, you know, even your client would go somebody else. Because have you ever have like, you know, a client that was working with you and then all of a sudden they just vanish and go work somebody else? Oh, it happens all the time, everybody. It happens all the time. <laughs> all right. It's so normal. So it's so annoying. I mean, yeah. yeah, especially with buyers, right? Yeah. Buyers, yeah, unless you sign an exclusive with them, uh, yeah, they would. But then most in New York City, not a lot of them would sign that buyer. They uh, would yeah. That's right? also the struggle of being a real estate. You yeah. Know, the struggle is the mental toughness. It's like, yeah. You invested so much time, so much time into it, and the deal sometimes just doesn't happen. Yeah. But that's 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 what it is in real estate that's that's what it is in real yeah. estate that's the why truthful. it's so tough that's why it's so tough yeah you work like for instance you work three months down the road dealing mm -hmm. with that client and all of a sudden that client turned around saying oh i found a house uh with somebody else yeah yeah you or, know or, or the deal could Look, die yeah or the deal could die certain then, thing pop up you know yeah. like like whatever it is violation on the property that you didn't find out no that's what happened to me in the beginning too yeah couldn't get a loan yeah couldn't get the you, loan you've been something? servicing that client for like three months and then you, you're, you're you're hoping yeah. the, the thing will go be through closed. yeah, yeah. And, but, and then uh, it fell yeah i it happens all the time in the real estate business that's why real estate is so hard you got to have a strong mentality going into real estate yeah to even think about becoming successful and if you don't prepare yourself for that, you're going to prepare yourself for failure. Mm, right? that, that's a good one. <laughs> yeah. 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 If you don't prepare for that, you're going to be preparing yourself for failure in real estate, honestly. Mm. Because you need so much mental strength in real estate, what I see now. Yeah. You know, especially for a new agent. If you don't have something that, that, that you can fall back on, like when I started in the beginning too, I don't have something to fall back on, I would be dead in the water. Mm. You know, and and so uh, how how would you say you you got through it through those struggles, Brian? Would you say that you know just trust the process and just keep doing the work? And yes, trust the process. Trust the because don't try to reinvent the wheels. That's how I did when I was in the beginning of real estate too. Right? It's like I try to reinvent the wheels. You know, like try to do certain things out of the box. Like do you know like like you know trying to make things different. But honestly. Real estate is like a dinosaur. You just have to follow the damn thing. <laughs> you know? If you follow, honestly, if you follow their recipe, you will become success. 
Hmm. Don't try to reinvent the success rate. Why? You know what I'm mean? saying? Yeah. And that's why it took real estate so long to adapt into newer technologies, newer stuff that I see now, like digital sign. They didn't have digital sign uh, back in the days. Everything was physical, right? <laughs> it's true. Yeah. And now everything is digital. Yeah. Right. So, so that's another thing that I'm seeing amazing about real estate is that the technology part of real estate is changing rapidly. Mm. AI is in play. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah. That is, that's another thing that, that another topic for a different day, but yeah. that AI is, is, is another crazy technology that that's happening right now, you know? Mm. And like I said, the mom and pop shop can't, can't catch up to that, that quick, you know, but for EXP, because originally EXP is a technology company, Yeah, you know, everything is cloud based. Everything is a very base. So their adaption into the new technology is so quick. Mm. You see, they have so many tools and then they, they embedded more AI in there too now as well. So it, it's, it's, it's crazy on this part, but yeah, that, that was my struggle, man. That, that was my struggle in, in real estate. I was going to quit. I was like, yo, I don't want to, I don't want to follow people. I don't want to call people. There's a certain period of time where I was in that dark hole where I like, yo, I just don't want to do shit. But, you know, they, my wife, you know, my wife was the one that, that motivated me too as well. And one thing that I, I seen in real estate back in the days um, was, was that, well, what is my purpose? Just mm -hmm. remind me of like, you know, what actually got me out from my financial crisis back in the days too as well. Yeah. And real estate is the one that actually got me out. Yeah, so I, I will say to all the people who's struggling in real estate, what is struggles in, in life? Mm -hmm. just, you just gotta put your head down and plow through. At the end of the, the road, you're gonna see a light shining down. Well, they always say there's always sunlight after the rain, right? Yeah, it's true. Uh, there's always going to day where you think the sky is going to fall on you and you, you think the world's going to end. But honestly, uh, if you pick yourself back up and, and, and remind yourself, like, what is your purpose? Mm. What is your goal? Like how much you want to make things like that, that, that kind of got me out from my, my struggle on this part is that, you know, remind myself, like, you know, what is my purpose? and what real estate can provide me. That's why I like real estate, you know? Yeah. Uh, if not, uh, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't care, <laughs> you know? Mm, okay, I mean, yeah, so I guess we pretty much wrapped up everything about real estate struggle, so let's uh, talk. Yeah, so let's wrap it up. So Brian, so what is your advice to people who's struggling in real estate? My advice for people that are struggling in real estate is that, yeah, remind yourself. You know, what's the purpose mm. you got into real estate in the first place, right? You want that financial freedom. You want that money. You want, you know, to provide for your family. You know, that, 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 that's how I kind of like, you know, got out is, is reminding myself what is the purpose, mm. right? If you don't have a purpose in anything you do, then you will fail. <laughs> yeah. Right? No, 100% uh, agree. Uh, yeah, so just remind yourself, like, what is the purpose, honestly? Like, what can real estate provide you? Mm -hmm. if, if real estate can't provide you what it is, then continue doing something else then. Yeah. Right? But if real estate can provide you with certain things, the lifestyle and a certain freedom that you want, then there you go. That's, that's got me off from what I was struggling from. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, I... There was a time where, like I said, I, I, I completely paused, like doing certain things. If you reach up to that time, maybe you should take a vacation. Yeah. Just to Just decompress. to refresh yeah. yourself. Because there, there was a time where, where, like I said to you, I, I was like really, you know, devastated in real estate. I was like, oh man, you know, like deal is dying. Uh, people I'm calling is, is, is turning me off. You know, stuff that is happening. Uh, it, it, it was very stressful. Mm. You know, that that was uh, why as like, you know, the, the reminder of, of why I got into real estate in the beginning is that, you know, it did make me a lot of money, mm. you know, I just well, my my biggest, I would say my biggest advice for new agents and for agents that want to get into real estate is that when you get into real estate, have the right mindset to go into it, think it as is a business and uh, have that goal 
uh, of yours set out and find the right firm and mentor. Because uh, honestly, in real estate, it, it's not just about the book. Yeah. It's you know? completely different when you're taking a test. <laughs> yeah. You're licensed. You, you have a license to, to do real estate. Yeah. It's completely different. Yeah. yeah. But learning the craft is the hardest. Mm. It's the same thing like in a way in any other business. Like for instance, construction chair as well. Yeah. Right? It takes time. You just yeah, it gonna, takes you, time to you, learn. Yeah. You're not going to know like, oh, I know how to put this, um, the beam, this goes hand there. That's right. That, that too. I don't even know what that's that right. tool is. <laughs> yeah. Like, like yeah. construction. I mean, it takes time for you to build up that skill. Yeah. Yeah. So the biggest thing for real estate when somebody planning on getting into real estate is that, you know, you got to know what you're getting into and you got to find out how to uh, learn and improve. What company that provide you the most technologies, the most, uh, the most availabilities for you to actually uh, learn mm. and the one that is available for you to even guide you, right? Yeah. Because a lot of company out there, they're not going to share their secret. Mm. You know, that's the hardest thing for agent to learn. Right. And one thing is for an agent as well, is that you got to have a right mindset that you're wanting to learn. If you think that you know everything and you think that you are, uh, you know, don't need to learn certain stuff and whatever it is, then it's going to be a very hard time for you, mm. you know? So you got to be open-minded as well. Yeah. So that's the biggest thing for, for, for that. So, yeah. all right, that, 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 that's wrapped that up for that topic. So now yeah. uh, that's we have good news. Interesting about there's a new project going up in Brooklyn, Bath Beach. Let's talk about that. And oh yeah. Real estate, yeah. What's going on with that? Uh, right over here, we have something uh, uh, that 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 I, I I will put on the screen. But this is what it is. Uh, it's called Bayview Condo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Brand new luxury condo mm -hmm. in uh, in Caesar's Bay area. I think this is like the tallest. Yes. One that they built. That I, don't, I haven't seen any other buildings in in, in not in beach. this location. Yeah. Uh, this one is the biggest, the highest uh, height uh, in this area right mm -hmm. now. So is the tallest condominium in this neighborhood in, in Brooklyn in if you could consider that one is Bath Beach area? Yeah. Yeah. And that is the highest highest built. Uh, you're, there's a hundred hundred and fifty one unit in there. And the style that they do is a kind of like a townhouse and condos. There's a townhouse condo layout and a, a side of the condo and a commercial downstairs as well. Oh that's so cool. a, and mostly all the unit in there has their own balcony as well. Mm. It's beautiful. Wow, and you're right by the water. You're right by the water, you have the view, there's no obstructive uh, block in it because all the other side is like commercial. Mm. Uh, so it's like a strip mall right. that has like Starbucks, they have uh, uh, Target, they have uh, Stretcher, Skecher, Skecher, Skecher Skechers. sneakers. They have coals, they have uh, bar furniture, they have Five Below, they have uh, Best Buy. So all, all the businesses is, is there. So they're not going to build up. So you're not going to get affected by that. Even if they build up, you're not gonna really going to get affected either because this building is pretty high. Yeah. <laughs> so this building, I mean, um, obviously it's changing the entire neighborhood mm -hmm. right and you have 151 units right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but you know what would be really cool if they actually put like a ferry at, at that bath beach because it's right by the bay That's you, you know how they have a port at bay ridge uh -huh. and they have another port at sunset park oh yeah red hook mm -hmm. brooklyn heights yes. and then go to manhattan and it even brings the governor island so it would be cool if they could new york put a ferry. ferry put in perspective if nobody tried the new york ferry before you should go because it's, uh, it's so nice. I mean, sick. it's the most expensive boat ride in your life, especially in New York. It's only four dollars. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It's only four bucks to go on like a. How much? A, how how a, much a is a it train. right now? Taking a train now, anyways, a three dollars, three fifty. Well, I haven't taken the train. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah wrong quite. I haven't <laughs> taken the train for a long time. After high school, I, I would say, uh, if I didn't have to take the train, I didn't want to take the train. But uh, but you get all this scenic view when you take the ferry. Yeah, and you have the AC, and it, that's it's right. So it's not crowded. It's well, not crowded. I guess it's, it depends on a certain period of time. Okay. Right. It could be crowded too if you go like a certain time. Mm. But uh, yeah, usually the, the ferry, why not? You're seeing, you're, you're on the ocean. You, you're seeing all the scenic out there in New York. 
You can see Statue of Liberties very clearly on there. Mm. You see the whole skyscraper of New York City and Brooklyn and all that it, for like a four dollar. Four dollars. And it's actually it's not bad because the the time wise is pretty fast. There's it's no fast. traffic. Yeah. You know what I'm <laughs> it's not like taking a train. If you if you yeah. take a train from let's say Bath Beach, this project, you yeah. take a train to Manhattan. I'd rather take well, it's going to be like almost an hour. 45 minutes, 50 yeah, minutes. Yeah. At the ferry, um, probably yeah. you get there in like 30 minutes or so, 25. That's right. There's no, there's no boat traffic. I would say. Yeah. <laughs> so they have free and clear, and uh, you know, from, <laughs> from that way to the other side. But then, yeah, the ferry takes you the whole Hudson Yard, you know, river. Yeah. Uh, put it this way. I mean, all up and down from Upper Manhattan to like, like, like you said, all the way down. And then they open it up right now in Far Rockaway. Oh wow. Yeah, so Fort Rockaway is going to start in August 10th. That's the new, new uh, uh, route that they're going to open up. And it's called like uh, Rocket Rockaway or something like that. And that's what they name it or, or so. It's going to take you from Rockaway to all the way up to Atlantic Avenue mm. and uh, near the Brooklyn Bridge in that area. So it's pretty fast uh, from, from Rockaway to that. That, I would say, is going to affect the real estate uh, market in Rockaway. Definitely, yeah, because now you have much easier transportation. Yeah, to get out of Rockaway. Yeah. You know? And Rockaway is nice. Yeah. And people who haven't been to Rockaway, it is surround. You're literally surrounding yourself by water. Yeah. In both sides. Mm-hmm. Right? You have water in the front, and you have the whole scenic of Manhattan, too. <laughs> if you think about it. Yeah. yeah. Rockaway is not a bad location. Right. For, I mean, if you like the beaches and stuff. The one thing is uh, it did get flooded by Sandy, but now nothing happens after Sandy. You know, everything was uh, pretty much okay in the area. And the house is, is, is nice. Nice and rock, uh, far rock away. Uh, but back to the Bayview Courtyard. That's what it's called. This condo is called Bayview, uh, Bayview Courtyard. Uh, it started from a one bedroom to all the way up to four bedroom. Price mm-hmm. range is only around like five five hundred to uh two million dollars yeah and of course the two million is like you're you're the penthouse yeah well well, that's yeah yeah you're you're like four bedroom yeah yeah Uh four bedroom for two million bucks with the view with the view with the balcony outdoors and then you got a lot of amenities in there too as well you have seventy thousand square foot of amenities in that wow uh yeah in that that uh that condo so you have swimming pool gym uh you have uh you know uh i think they they try to get a supermarket down there or something like that hopefully they get something uh supermarket down there and Mm -hmm. uh there's a there's a school in there too as well for if you have kids so so you could really just practically stay in that building yeah (laughs) but you just stay in the building i mean the building has everything that (laughs) there is for you to to honestly you're gonna get the best view for the firework at Coney Island, that they happen every Friday. Mm, <laughs> that would be yeah, nice. That, that, that'd be nice. But Coney Island is another different topic that we should get jump into because Coney yeah. Island is changing. It is. It, it's it a lot of a lot. things happening. Uh, There's a lot Coney of new Island. development going on around Coney Island as well. Uh, well, the, they are saying they're trying to put a casino down there. Yeah, I know. We'll, we'll talk about it next time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll talk about that next time. <laughs> but, but yeah, this Bayview condo is, is, is 151 unit. And uh, starting prices, like I said, around five hundred to two million dollars, and you're getting from one bedroom to four bedroom, mm-hmm. and the the layout and the style that they have is luxurious, and it's the highest building. If whoever want to get their first dip into it, there is a going on discount rate right now. If you want to jump on it, mm-hmm. so if you guys want more information about that, I guess contact. Kenwood and or I, Brian. Yeah. yeah, we can get you access to it. Uh, they are they are starting to show it right now so for a private tour only. Mm. Yeah, only private tour on this because the, the the building is still under construction. It's not fully renovated the whole thing yet, but there there is. Uh, I believe there's uh, there's one unit that they they they're gonna make it into a showroom yeah. in there, so you can actually have a, a taste of what it is. How about when the showroom is ready? We'll get a video tour at the showroom. Oh, that, that, yeah. that, of course, that, that will be uh, it. Yeah. And that'll be one of our topics later on. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that is that today, guys. Hope you guys enjoy uh, our real talk, real, real life and real estate in New York City and uh, real deals. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll catch you guys next time then. We'll catch you on the next, uh, next episode. Yeah. All right. Take care. Be Peace. well. Peace. <laughs>